Hi, Ben Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about the concept of reverse dieting. What it is, why you might do it, how you would do it, as well as reasons you might not want to do it, and shortfalls in the research to back it up. So, I'm going to lay the groundwork for you. If you've been dieting for a long period of time, let's say you've been on a prolonged diet, aggressive diet, you've reached low percentage body fat, whatever, there are certain um, physiological adaptations which make dieting harder or sustaining your current weight harder. So there are decreases in hormone levels, for example, testosterone, insulin, thyroid hormones, leptin levels. There are increases in ghrelin and cortisol levels, and there are decreases in metabolic rate. So you may notice this as you lose weight, you find that you're, you, you suddenly hit a weight loss plateau, you have to drop calories further, you hit a weight loss plateau, you have to drop calories further, so your caloric requirements decrease. So this, uh, this kind of um, this process, dieting over a period of time, because it decreases caloric requirements, decreases metabolic rates, you will find that dieting is harder and harder to stick to because just because your caloric needs are going down doesn't mean that it's that straightforward. It's been shown that levels of appetite or markers of appetite can be heightened for up to a year of weight maintenance. So if you lose weight and then you maintain your new physique or weight for a year, you will still have or still can have heightened levels of appetite and depression of energy expenditure so even in the long term people that have had to lose weight and then maintain that weight can find it harder and harder to stick to this level so in terms of bodybuilders I'll use this as my example if a bodybuilder diets very very hard steps on stage they've been eating the fewest calories that they've eaten ever their appetite is through the roof. Their susceptibility to weight gain is also through the roof, partly due to um, decreases in metabolic rate, partly due to the hormonal changes that have occurred during their dieting phase. So this is why a lot of people, once they've stepped on stage after a very, very rigid diet, will notice that their tendency to binge eat goes through the roof. Now, the goal of reverse dieting is for you to relax your dieting protocols without having the um, need to binge eat. So if you ask someone who's been on very, very extreme diets, chances are they did it for a certain period of time and then a lot of them, enough was enough and their eating changes dramatically. They go back to eating how they were before. They can often put all the weight they lost back on, sometimes with surplus. Um, in the instances of bodybuilders, they'll diet to a show, then post-show they go on crazy eating binges, and in a lot of instances, again, will weigh more than they did when they started their diet. So you could lose 20 pounds to step on stage, and then suddenly a few weeks later, weigh 30 pounds more than you were on stage. So you can actually get fatter than you were when you started your diet. So that's very, very common. Ask people that have stepped on stage what they ate afterwards, and a lot of the time they'll actually remember it because it was that um, that big of a deal. They were looking forward to it so much. So this is where reverse dieting comes in. The goal of reverse dieting is to gently increase your caloric intake to try and prevent rapid weight gain rebound. It's also for you to relax your dieting approach whilst promoting a healthy outlook towards food rather than binge eating. So logically this makes sense it makes sense to gradually increase things to try and mitigate weight gain rebound it isn't that clear cut because reverse dieting doesn't have um, a specific protocol there is not research in humans to say that this approach is better than this approach or whatever this is just one coach might do one thing one coach might do another thing. It's very, very personal preference and anecdotal evidence to this point, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just something you need to be aware of. It isn't the be all and end all and, and buy into it blindly type of thing. So 
one of the reasons you might not buy into reverse dieting in a very very um, famous study called the Minnesota starvation experiment um, when subjects were on a very very extreme diet their drop in metabolic rate was 40 percent which let's face it is massive so think about your caloric requirements 40 percent drop in that you know it's a big change now 25 percent of that was accounted for solely due to changes in body weight so as your body weight decreases you require less calories to maintain that body weight so there was only a 15 percent difference in terms of adaptive thermogenesis I, there was only 15 percent drop in metabolic rate which wasn't directly linked to a drop in body weight so what i'm saying is that if this is your body weight and this is your basal metabolic rate they'll both go down together but the basal metabolic rate will go down fractionally faster so in the most extreme control study to date the minnesota starvation experiment this only accounted for 15 percent um, decrease in metabolic rate which is why some people say the need to reverse diet there isn't any so it's important for me to bring you up to date with all the research so for the people who do reverse diet here is the typical I'm going to I'm going to call it guidelines because everyone's got a slightly different approach your goal is to week on week gradually increase your calories knowing that overfeeding can raise metabolic rate in the same way that underfeeding can decrease metabolic rate but you're doing it gradually enough that you're trying to mitigate um, fat rebound now this may be slightly different for example if a male is going through a lean muscle building phase the amount of muscle gain they can um, achieve will be heightened to that of a female so their weight might go up slightly more so than a female hypothetically speaking always hypothetical in this instance um, if someone's a bodybuilder they might have six months of lean mass gain before they go into the next dieting phase if you're someone who's just dieted for the beach you kind of in a way have to just put your own spin on this because you might not have time frames it just might be the concept which you're trying to adapt so knowing that everyone's different here are my rules there is no specific rule to how much weight you may want to gain week on week because like I say one person it'll be different if you're male or female it'll be different how much weight you've lost um, it'll be different um, if someone is chemically assisted if someone's natural it'll be different if someone's only lost a few pounds and they're just they lost a few pounds through a crash diet and they're just trying to make a more sensible decision in how to go back to eating normally everyone is going to be different so these are my very 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 broad guidelines that I want you to kind of take away and think about before you try and implement so if you weigh yourself every morning first thing in the morning completely naked after you've been to the toilet you will know that daily you'll have certain weight fluctuations how much you've eaten whether you're holding water if you've exercised um, bowel movements toilet habits etc etc because weight fluctuates daily I tend to recommend taking a, a kind of average so if we do this in seven days if your eating stayed exactly the same and you were trying to maintain weight you would have a seven day average so if you gradually increase your food intake you look at that and compare it to the next seven day average you're looking for I was going to say you're looking for the smallest increase in, as possible but some people may, may be just trying to decrease the rate they're losing fat I, if someone's been on a crash diet they might be trying to slow things down before maintaining and before increasing caloric intake so it is it, it varies so much between individuals that you really need to take this away and look at it to yourself so here are a couple of examples if someone's been on a very low carb diet and the majority of their deficit has come from de decreasing carbs they may look for um, let's say adding 10 grams of carbs per day for the week monitoring their weight gain readjusting as necessary so it's just a constant process of assessing adjusting reassessing adjusting if someone's been on a crash diet lost a lot of weight hit the weight they wanted to achieve 
they might be increasing calories to to slow down the rate they're losing weight to then maintain their weight weight loss so in which case what you would do is you would look at slowly adding calories back in and try and watch your weight loss slowing down before achieving it to maintenance levels so there is absolutely no definitive way to do this if i gave you a specific protocol i would be making it up out of thin air um, if someone's dropped carbohydrates it makes sense that carbohydrates are what they start introducing if they've dropped carbohydrates and fats they may need to introduce together if they've dropped fats then maybe they need to reintroduce fat it's completely different on the individual i'm not comfortable giving a recommendation on how to do something which at the moment is kind of is purely hypothetical i think that reverse dieting holds um value even if it's from a psychological perspective i find it easier for me to reverse diet without binge eating than I have done previously when I haven't reverse dieted. Um, is it necessarily better for maintaining weight than jumping up 200 calories and maintaining it there? Um, I don't know, not necessarily. I think for some people it probably will be and for others it might not. But the point is, this is a, a concept that you need to be aware of. A lot of you may benefit from this if you implement it yourself, but if I gave one protocol out it would work well for one person and it might be awful for another so I'd, I'd just prefer not to do that I prefer to give you the advice in terms of assess um, adjust and reassess and you to try and use some um, some kind of logic to apply it to your own principles so this is something that I'm bringing you up to date with the research why you might want to do it why you might might not want to do it but I'm actually not giving specific protocols on how um, and I'm actually I prefer to do it that way so please if you've got specific questions if you've dieted using X protocol and you want to know what I might do if it were me um, please feel free to ask them on my Facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter personal training or my Twitter page which is BDC Carpenter and I hope you found it uh, insightful and useful thought-provoking, if nothing else. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.